Hey everybody, Mo here, and today I'm going to give you guys another episode of Meta Monday. So I'm going to go over what um, happened this week, this week in Runeterra, what's been popular, what's doing well, um, what's not doing well, stuff like that to kind of give you guys an idea of what you can play, what you can expect to play in Master's Ladder. <clears throat> so right now, let's see here. Um, and then I'm going to go over the tournaments from this weekend also. So let me open up San Tupe. I had them open earlier. Um... Let's go through here and find the 1K from the Master in Runeterra this weekend. And yeah, and so it's going to be quick. Uh, I don't got a lot of time here, but I will go over things. Um, that's the that, that's the that. I think they had the top. Yeah, here it is right here. Um, so we are going to go over. Here it is. Sorry, I was distracted. All right, so uh, deck number one is going to... I'm going to go over the top eight most played decks on ladder, and we're going to go over this tournament here. So deck number one is going to be Ash Blanc. So Ash Blanc is not really too crazy. It's not like the worst deck in the world, but definitely I don't think it's too good. We saw it really rise in play rate, and I don't really know why. The winner was like stupid high. I think even in normals and like not Masters games, the... Play rate is or sorry the win rate is like really high but once you get into masters you see the play rate starts to drop down to this like just normal um like 52 percent which is kind of more expected and kind of more on what people think is normal um yeah i don't think it's too crazy i've been using it you see some people have really high success with it it's really good into the demacia decks i just don't think there's enough demacia decks to warrant playing it at the moment but i think it is strong um i think you can build it to beat uh karma set potentially i think if you build it like super aggressively you can beat karma set um but i don't think you're like gonna be super favored you're pretty good into like samira leona um because that's more of a mid-rangey samira build than the uh, uh samira fizz deck so that's gonna go better for you but all in all i think it's kind of just very mid um yeah, I think it's okay. It's like so it's getting to like this Leona Kale, but once you start getting into the aggro decks, like Karma Sets, you're like barely losing. Deep, you're like barely losing. The Samira Fizz, you're like really not that good into. So yeah, it's very uh, okay. Uh, Samira Fizz, number two. So it's gone down from most played deck. So the most played deck was the um, uh, most played deck was Samira Fizz, and then got taken over by Ash LeBlanc. So. I think the win rate's still going up on it, which is kind of crazy. I think this just shows that people are both playing decks that are bad into Samira Fizz now. Like, you know, Ash LeBlanc is being really popular. As well as people are kind of more optimizing Samira Fizz to do well. Um, so I think if you look at a lot of these lists, they're starting to play like a couple monkeys. I know some people are really not on the monkey train. Like I know Drizoth wasn't, but even in his most recent um, gauntlet run, he was playing it. So I think people have started to come around to like two monkeys to be the normal. Um, like some people are on three, some people are on zero. I think honestly, I personally really like the two monkeys. I think that's probably the best thing we have. Um, yeah, um, I, I, I like the two monkeys. I think it's doing really good. Um, Micah, oh crap, I just closed the Santupe thing. Uh, Drizoth actually just posted his win rate and his like image of him playing. He's like, I don't know if anyone else has TF Fizz back, but I do. And this is just, like, him showing some of your Fizz. If you actually zoom in, like, really far here... Oh, it's not going to zoom in. You see, I'm one of the losses. See that right there? That's a loss. That's me. That's me. But, um, we'll close that. And, yeah, so deck number three is Set Karma. So, yeah, anyways, I think Samira Fizz is just, like, really, really, really good. Um, I think it's fairly understandable, um, why people think that. Uh, number three is Karma Set. I think this deck is very, very good. You see people boasting these insane win rates, 86% from Sorry. Um, I think Karma Set is probably my second, like, go-to on ladder right now. Um, basically my first go-to is Samira Leona. And then if that's not working for me, I'm going to go to Karma Set. I think Karma Set's probably the best deck in the game right now. And it's 100% the deck I would be on with the, uh, like, for ladder. Or, sorry, for tournaments. I think my lineup is definitely, like, Karma Set plus a Samira deck. And then plus, like, X. X being, like, kind of random um yeah that's kind of like my go-to right now uh then we have samira leona this is my go-to ladder deck at the moment uh very very strong uh nick hit rank one with it i know um <clears throat> nick hit rank one with it i know in na kuvira hit rank one with it in eu someone else hit rank one with it on eu so 
like the deck is insanely strong. It's not definitely not supposed to be slept on. Uh, I highly, highly recommend you pick it up if you're into aggro. Like if maybe if oh, you see Aragorn's like has a ninety percent win rate with it, like it's doing really well for um it's doing really well for an aggro deck in this meta. I think a lot of people weren't really expecting it to do that well. So I uh, highly, highly recommend you picking this up if you like Samira or you like aggro decks, but maybe Samira Fizz isn't really doing it for you. I know Samira Fizz can feel kind of like not great at times. Um, sometimes you just get like these atrocious like misdraws that make you feel really sad. And this deck can kind of, you know, combat that. So highly recommend you uh, pick that up. That's something like I'm, I'm, I'm doing. That's probably like my go-to lineup right now in tournaments is Karma Set, Leona, Samira. Um, yeah, and see, it's beating, like, a bunch of random shit. It's really beating this, uh, Karma decks. Like, Karma Set, it's beating, like, um, Karma Set, Freljord, and Karma Set PNZ. 67% here, 78% here. Granted, the, like, um, Karma Set Freljord is, like, whatever deck, but it's still doing a really, really good job here. So, um, you're basically losing to, like, SI control, hard control. You're losing to decks you don't have too much interaction with. Uh, but outside of that, like the big, the big mid range decks kind of beat you because you're, you're really like an aggro deck disguised as a mid range deck. But like, because of that, if you go too late into the game with these for decks, they're going to just beat you. Um, I can't think of the name, the six mana spell in this deck. Um, yeah. Reckoning just like kind of, I mean, wrecks you because you don't play super huge units outside of like one, maybe two with a pale cascade. So, um, yeah, it's not, not too um great into those huge mid-range decks but overall i really like samira leona um as my go-to deck on ladder at the moment we see this person like aragorn uh, world champion 90 percent win rate uh storm hammer uh, an apex 90 percent win rate like people are boasting insane win rates with this deck highly highly recommend let's see if they're on the pure ret. yeah um one thing i would recommend is playing pure ret in this deck i think my version plays two pure Rets and then two um brothers bonds over the three might so I'm on like two Pale Cascade, two Might, and two of the Shield Bearer. And I'm playing two Pirouettes and two uh, Brothers Bonds. And I'm not on any Precious Pets. But um, uh, it feels much stronger. I think Brothers Bond can allow you to push a lot of damage. It's oftentimes just a two mana Decimate uh, early game. Because you play like a unit on turn one. And then you can like stun something on turn three. And then now you're always going to be at least like one wide or one more wide than them. Um, if you play like unit on one, like two one drops on turn two, even let's say a, a game where you go like one drop on one, two one drops on two, and they just play like a unit and they don't have any fast speed interaction on turn three really because they're like another unit based deck or something. Um, you can just like attack, they block you brother's bond and that's like plus four damage. There's a lot of things you can do with brother's bond. Um, also in the mirror match, brother's bond on Leona. Um, oops. Brothers Bond on Leona makes it trade into other Leonas at fast speed. Like, yeah, Might does the same thing, but Brothers Bond also allows you to get, like, a better trade down the line also. So if you, like, full send um, and they get some, like, greedy block of, like, value block, you can Brothers Bond your Leona and their other thing, and now your Leona is killing theirs, and your uh, secondary unit or whatever is probably getting an uptrade on one of their units. So um, I really, really like Brothers Bond in this deck. Um, let's see here. And then, so, oops, go away. Oh, no, sorry. Um, uh, Quinn Gwyn, I think this deck is actually, like, really strong. I think this deck is really well positioned. I found myself having to ban it a lot in the tournament I played in. Um, the deck felt very scary. You see here, it's, like, bad into Samara Leona because it kind of just, like, kills you a lot of the times. Um, a lot of the aggro decks are kind of just, like, killing you. Like, Echo Jinx is just killing you. Samara Leona just killing you. Samara Varus Riven's just killing you um Ashla Blanc is not just killing you it, it applies a decent amount of pressure while also just like frostbiting you so it's good there but you see like what are you beating with this deck it's all the slow stuff you're beating all the like traditional Demacia decks then you're beating all the control decks um so like that's all traditional Demacia style decks and then you're beating like control control um you're beating Pike Rek'Sai is kind of weird it's like if they don't apply enough pressure you can kind of just kill them but sometimes you just make enough chump blockers that it makes it hard for them to trade into you. On top of the fact that you have quick attack challengers a lot of the times with um, uh, what is it? Cataclysm is like very good. I think this deck is definitely one that people should explore more. And it's it's a really top tier tournament deck. Number six is Deep. Um, Deep has kind of come out of the woodworks. I'm not sure why. I, I'm sure, I know why. I just don't agree with it. People think this deck beats um, all of the 
uh control decks like karma sets and stuff and i don't really think it does it beats it's anti-control so it's gonna beat these like random shit like uh caitlin jace uh the sin of igar uh nora vigar sin of igar um like all these control decks i guess it's good into leona kale uh, oh i'm sorry that's not samira leona where is it into samira leona is my question uh because i wouldn't think it's good into samira leona but Maybe it is. Maybe it just, like, makes units that are too big too quickly. I mean, like, here's Samira Leona. It's slightly worse. Here's Samira Leona. Yeah, it's, like, not winning into those. It's not really winning into Karma Set. Uh, I'll give you guys the secret here. Because a lot of people think Maokai, or Deep, like, beats Karma Set. And I even had, like, I played against Nick in Gauntlet. Um, and he was like, oh, Mo, you're, like, the first person to ever beat me in that matchup of, like, Karma Set into Maokai. Here's the, tr here's the trick. Is that if you're playing Karma Set side... You don't have to actually kill their dudes. <laughs> so a lot of times, like, they win that matchup pretty freely if they just play, like, flipped Maokai on, like, 7 or something, right? If they have, like, flipped Maokai on 7 um, or 8 is how they're going to beat you. But if you're the Karma set player, literally just hard mulligan for Karma and then just hard draw and predict and try and find two Karmas. If you can get two Karmas in your hand, you just win the game. Um, because they're going to try really hard to, like, toss and do all this stuff level their maokai and then they're gonna play maokai and think they won the game and then you're just gonna be able to play karma on turn 10 and then play this karma spell in your hand and now you're just shuffling like literally infinite karmas into your deck so they can't deck you out anymore so now they have to play like a real game plan and they're not gonna be that good into you because then they're just another mid-range deck that's trying to play into karma set on turn 10 and you're just gonna kill them um, and on top of that, you'll have infinite cards because while you're shuffling infinite karmas into your deck, you're, like, creating infinite cards in your hand. So, uh, yeah, don't just go around killing their stuff because that's how they level their Maokai so early. It's because people go, like, oh, a 3-2 on turn 3, Mystic Shot. And they're, like, oh, like you have to kill the Sea Scarab on 2 because Sea Scarab gets out of hand really quickly, especially if you do, like, Sea Scarab plus Maokai. Um, so you have to kill Sea Scarab most of the time. But, um... A lot of times after that you don't like you don't have to kill their 2-1 you don't have to kill their 3-2 like just concussive palm stuff like kill it eventually like don't die to it obviously but like just palm their stuff and just stall them out so that way you have time to find your two karmas and then once you find both of your karmas you can then just start like killing stuff and doing your like your whatever game plan and just trying to kill them and try and get them to like ult the maokai um, and this is literally something that you used to have to do way, way back three years ago in Karma Ezreal versus Deep when Deep first launched with Rising Tides. Um, the reason I am like so good in this matchup is because this is the exact matchup I played three years ago. Like I won with Karma Ezreal versus Deep three years ago and it was the same thing. You just like don't let them level their Maokai early by killing their stuff. And then you just try to hard mulligan for two karmas and try to draw into your second karma. And then if you get that, then you can just play the game normally because you, you're not actually afraid of the Maokai ultimate. You don't care about the Maokai ultimate because if they ult Maokai, you just like have infinite karmas anyway. So it, it's really irrelevant um, and it can disrupt their game plan. So that's your trick. That's like probably the biggest takeaway from today is how to play the Maokai and Nautilus matchup with Karma Set. As well as I'm going to show some games. Uh, I think I have a Karma Set guide coming out tomorrow where the games I played in tournament as well as some ladder games. Um, so I think I'll have a, a deep game on there for you. All right, another one is Pike Rek'Sai. So, um, Lurk is kind of whatever. I think people are just playing Lurk because it's fun. I don't think it's very good. Um, we'll see what it beats here. It shouldn't really be beating anything. Yeah, it's beating Demacia decks. That makes sense. It's beating Deep because Deep's just kind of too slow for you. Um, yeah, I, I don't think this deck's very good. Um, it's beating Frostbite. That's kind of weird. Um, yeah, it's mostly just beating like Junk. It says it's 50-50 into Karma Set, which is like really funny because these decks are supposed to beat the Control decks. Karma set just like Mystic shots you and then palms you and you cry. Uh, I've had a lot of success with uh, Karma set into this matchup, so it is. And Jack Seraphine. So Jack Seraphine, I think is like the biggest bait deck in the game right now. Uh, but it also like looks simultaneously like really good. I don't think I think this deck is good. Don't get me wrong. Um, I think this deck is good, but I don't think this deck is like broken. I don't think this deck is like super super good. I think ba basically if you draw BB on five or six. The deck is like obviously tier one, like contender for best deck in the game. I think if you don't have a BB on turn five or six, then this deck is immediately like tier three and the power swing you have from having BB and not having BB is like insane. So um, yeah, I think uh, I think 
the standard like top lineup right now is like Jack Seraphine, Karma Set, and then some like Samira deck or some like third like really good deck, but it's probably a Samira deck. And I think that's very fair. Um, that's probably what I'll end up being on for the open. I'll just play a bunch of Jack Seraphine. It doesn't feel great uh, to me because of what I just said, but I think it's good enough that you can probably play it. Um, that it'll probably do well enough for you across nine rounds or eight rounds if you get the buy. Um, I don't think I'm going to get the buy. My Ruthless Rumbles went really, really bad. Um, and I didn't start playing Gauntlets until like a couple days after the set launch, so I missed out on some trophies. So I don't even think I... I don't literally don't think it's possible for me to get the buy. And I have like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, so I think I, I get at most 50 tokens. And I think I literally need like 52 or something. Like I just needed to not go 0-2 in my Rumble. But um, you guys don't care about that because you're not here for me you're here for the meta but anyways um yeah that's probably what uh, i think is a good deck for the um open or a good lineup for the open is like jack seraphine um samira something in the karma set like i'll probably be on samira leona i know some people like just really love samira fizz and they do really well with it i just personally don't do that great with it i think sometimes the deck just draws poorly and i don't really know how to pilot those poor draws where some people do i mean some people know exactly how to win in every spot I'm just more of a Samira uh, Leona gamer, I think. But yeah, so that's what the most eight, uh, top eight most played decks are for ladder at the moment. Um, yeah, and then tournament scene. Uh, I don't really have too much time to go over that, but I will say that uh, Majin won with the Karma Set, Samira Fizz, and uh, Jack Seraphine lineup. Very popular lineup. I think it was the most popular lineup in top eight. I know Samira made a eight out of eight appearance on top eight, which was the second time this has ever happened in LOR history where um, a champion has taken up all eight spots at the top eight of a big tournament like this. Um, the first time being Nar when Nar released, uh, Nar's release weekend. He was the first person to ever go eight out of eight, and no one's done it since until Samira. Uh, very good. So, yeah, for tournaments this week, I would highly recommend playing whatever you're comfortable with is, like, the number one thing. But for me, like, just raw strength-wise, I think Karma Set, uh, Jack Seraphina, like, a samira deck is probably the safest best lineup to go of course you can do some like hard targeting stuff if you like really want to hard target a specific lineup you can do that but as far as just generalized good lineups that's what i would recommend and that's what i'll be playing so hope you guys enjoy this meta monday um hope you guys i know it's kind of shorter today but i'm really crunched on time so uh yeah i'll have a bunch of deck guides come out this week i got um a i'm gonna play some ash leblanc for you guys i'm gonna play karma set for you guys i'm gonna play um uh, Jack Seraphine. I'm going to play those three decks for you guys, as well as have my Sweaty Thursday come out Thursday, telling you guys what to play for the Open, what lineups to look out for, what are some potential lineups if you're still, like, worried about not knowing what to play. Um, yeah, all that good stuff. So make sure to tune in for that. Like, subscribe, don't, so you don't miss notifications, all that type of stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next video.